What is good everybody, welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today we are back with another ranking style video, man. Today we are taking a look at the AEW Unmatched Collection by Jazzwares. We already did the Unrivaled Figures, man. We already took a look at every mainline AEW Unrivaled Figure set from Series 1 all the way through Series 12. And today we're throwing it over to the Silver Packaging, the AEW Unmatched Collection Series 1 through Series number 6. Of course, we're excluding exclusives. We're excluding... Uh... We're excluding the exclusives, we're excluding the two packs, we're excluding the chase figures, we're excluding all that crap. It's only the main figures that come in the main set. So, AEW Unmatched Collection, Series 1 through 6, all the main figures, there are 35 total figures, because Series 3 took the axe to one of the figures. I think it was the LJN Darby Allen was supposed to be in that set, but they ended up moving him back a couple sets, so now everything's F. Nonetheless, let's shut the hell up, dive into the Unmatched Collection, and let me know down in the comment section below what, A, what's the worst figure in the Unmatched Unmatched collection as a whole, and B, what's the best figure in the Unmatched collection as a whole? Let's shut the hell up and dive into it, man. Starting out at number 35, and it is going to be from Series 4, the Corazon de Leon Chris Jericho. I think it's a unique figure. I think it's awesome that they threw this back and tried their hand at it. But I don't think it lands. I think it's a huge miss. Head sculpt isn't good. Posability is... I mean, he's a bit stiff, man. He's a bit stiff. Sounds like I'm jacking up a car or something. I hate the paintwork here, and I hate how they sculpted these tassels on the leg. Why the hell would you do that, man? It just looks ugly. It looks jacksy. I don't like it. Get it out of my face. It's it's easily, it, to me, it's my least favorite AEW Unmatched figure, and now he wants to have loose shins. I mean, what are we doing here? Easily the worst figure in the Unmatched collection. Number 34 is going to be the Stu Grayson from series number 3. Yes, he looks like Lieutenant Dan right now. I used his legs for a custom, and the reason I can't stand this figure. It's very plain Jane, first of all. Very plain Jane figure. I'm not the biggest Stu Grayson fan. Like, I just, I'm, I'm just not that attached to the character. Very, very loud, which I've also noticed that is an unmatched collection thing. If you've ever noticed it, it I think it got better in Series 6. It's still happening, but the uh, the figures just are way more stiff, man. They're not buttery smooth like Unrivaled figures, but Stu Grayson is number 35, man. I just, I never replaced him. I have a mint on card figure, and I have this one. I need to get another one, but I just, I, I am in no hurry whatsoever to replace that figure. Number 33 is going to be the Britt Baker from Series number 1. This one might might shock some people, but I'm just not a fan of it. The pegs look massive in the arms. It's very, like, loosey-goosey. Head sculpt is definitely not great. Doesn't really stand the best. It's very, very, like, weird-looking. I don't know. Just pr proportion-wise, I, I just am not a fan, man. I think there's definitely better figures. Her figures, uh, she has much better figures than the Unmatched Series 1. I understand it's the first one, but it's the worst one. And number 32, we have John Silver. Now, I actually like John Silver. I have no, like, quarrels about the guy, but again, just like uh, Stu Grayson, just very, very stiff. I don't think the head sculpts are very great, to be honest with you. He gets really loose on me. Very plain Jane and like, not just just not great. Not not great by far, but a lot of it has to do with the stiffness. I'm just not with the stiffness, man. If you're stiff, you get the hell out. Number 31 is going to be the Dustin Rhodes from series number 1. I like the aesthetic of this figure definitely better than the series 2 Unrivaled, and this one actually has buttery smooth. Uh, series 1 of the Unmatched Match collection actually has buttery smooth joints, but he still can't pose around, man. His, it, like, look at that right there. I just tried to bend him, and he pops off at the top. He looks great, but he is just not great, and I, I don't like how loose the ankles are. I also don't like his lower legs and boots. I just feel like he's very weird. Uh, wants to fall over. I'm just, uh, 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 headaches. Coming in at number 30 might shock some people, but I have the Miro from series number one. Series one, not off to a good start, okay? Not off to a good start here, but I also replaced the head the head sculpt was not very good either, but this figure is actually very buttery smooth. Like I said, Unmatched Series 1 had a very buttery smooth feel to it, and this guy can pose around great. I like the, you know, the kick pad rotation. He poses around pretty good and feels really immaculate in hand. I just think the head sculpt wasn't there, and uh, it's just, it's not the best figure of all time. The Series 10 Unrivaled figure crushes this one. You put a different head sculpt on there, it does wonders for it, but that head sculpt was dreadful, and it doesn't get him very far in this countdown today. Number 29 is going to be the Series 2 MJF figure. Very plain Jane. Similar to the Unrivaled 6. It's just not very... It's the Unrivaled 6 with repainted trunks. And that figure did horrible in the ranking. This one does horrible as well. It's just not your favorite go-to MJF. Very just plain Jane. Not a good gear. Not a good head sculpt. And kind of like Randy Orton. It's like if he's got a good head sculpt and good gear, he's going to be high on the list. But 
Unfortunately, he fails in both categories. He's dropping down to number 29. At number 28, we have the Sammy Guevara from series number 5. I like this figure. I'm not a big fan of the head sculpts, but, you know, it's a Sammy Guevara in, in prison gear. And while I'm not the biggest Sammy Guevara fan here, I can appreciate some of the things going on here, but it's not going to move the needle for you that much. Not the greatest figure of all time. He's coming in at the number 28 spot. Number 27 is from Series 5. It is the Red Velvet. Not a bad figure. I just don't think it really looks like Red Velvet, to be honest. I, I feel like uh, they could do her much better. I think that uh, it's not, a, again, it's not a bad figure. I think it poses around fine. And it's an acceptable figure. I just think that Red Velvet could, it could be a lot better. I think they could do a lot better on her next figure. I just don't think the likeness is quite there for her. At number 26, we have the LJN Darby Allen. Now, the reason this is, like, aesthetically, this figure looks great. looks just like Darby. The paint apps are fine, all those things. It just doesn't remind me of an LJN. It's very stiff. It is hard as a rock, and it's not soft and pliable. It is just, a, it is a hard statue with a weird pose. And uh, I can give it its graces for what it does do, but what it doesn't do is recapture the LJN. So for me, he is pretty far down the list. For me, he is coming in at number 26. At number 25, we have Tay Conti from Series 2. A fun figure, a solid figure. I didn't think our head sculpts were that great, man. And I think if you're a women's figure, your head sculpts have to be good. And that holds back a lot of these lower figures for the women. I just think that uh, these head sculpts don't do it for me. I think the likeness is there. It's just like, I feel like she looks a bit derpy at times. And I like the gear and everything. I just think that uh, she could be better. It's not the worst figure of all time, but definitely not one of the best. So she comes in at the number 25 spot. Speaking of female figures, we have number 24. We have Anna J. Like Anna J a lot, but much like Tay Conti. Solid from the neck down, just the head sculpt isn't the best, but I think the Anna J does slightly beat out the Tay Conti, so she comes in just ahead of her on this countdown for me today. Number 23 is going to be C Series 2 Santana. like this figure a lot. I like the screaming expression. I think it's much better than his Unrivaled 4, but uh, it it's just pretty much a repaint. You know, it's, it's got a good head sculpt. I like the camo pants and everything, but they're certainly better figures. I enjoy the figure, but there's certainly better ones out there, so he comes in at this spot. Number 22 is gonna be the Owen Hart figure. Owen Hart's figure is actually really good, man. I think he poses around really well, feels buttery smooth, unmatched Series 6 here. I like this figure a lot. It's a repaint of the ringside exclusive. If the, I can honestly say, like, the head sculpt looks solid, all these things. If this was in a, a traditional Owen Hart gear or something, he'd probably be way higher on the list. I'm not a big fan of the boot mold, but I think that Everything else works for me. It's just not the look we wanted. And so that reason he comes in here. Not a bad figure whatsoever. Just not one that I guess you really want in your collection. At least from this era. But who am I? You know, just personally not for me. Number 21 is going to be Unmatched Series number 4, MJF. This figure is really good. Except for the thing that matters most in MJF action figures. And that is the head sculpt, man. This gear is beautiful. The pinnacle, white, purple, and gold is gorgeous. The head sculpt is not. Looks nothing like MJF. And I tried to give this figure as many flowers as I could, but, you know, eventually you gotta stop giving because it's not giving back to you. And that's the reason there. He comes in at number 21. At number 20, we have the Series 6 Unmatched Collection Ortiz. Very fun figure, man. I know he's in the prison jumpsuit, but he's in like the full get up, long sleeves, everything like that. Really good head sculpt on here. I like the face paint. He poses around well. Fun figure, just not one that's like, you know, you're going to lose your mind over and try to search out hardcore. I put Ortiz at number 20. At number 19, we have his partner in the jumpsuit as well. We have Santana from that same set. I never did full fledged reviews on these. I think going forward, unless there's like a standalone great figure from AEW, I don't think I'm going to do separate reviews. I think we're going to do it all in one unless there's like some certain guys that stand out very much, but he comes in at the number 18 spot? No, 19. Number 19 is Santana. I enjoy this figure. I think I like the Santana slightly more than Ortiz. Got a little bit more uniqueness going on. He could, he actually has more articulation as well. Coming in at 18, we have the Series 2 Wardlow. If you guys know me, you know I love Wardlow, but this one isn't as good as his Unrivaled. Level 10. I know this is more of like your standard Wardlow, but out of all the Wardlows we've seen so far, the Walmart exclusive, which I also haven't reviewed on the channel, the Walmart exclusive, the Unrivaled 10, and the Unmatched Series 2. The Unmatched Series 2 is the worst of the worst just because of the attire. The attire is just not the greatest. It's not bad. It's a good figure. I enjoy it. It's just not the best. Coming in at number 17 is the LJN Cody figure. I really love this figure. Now, it doesn't pose around or anything. It is supposed to be like an LJN and everything like that. I really 
really like this figure. The colors pop off nice. It's very, so compared to Darby Allen, this one's just much better to me. I find myself like picking this guy up and just looking at him for some reason. I like the sculpts. I, I you know, the, the lightness on the face isn't as good as Darby Allen, but this reminds me of an LJN, you know, it has more pliableness and it just feels softer. It actually feels like an LJN. I don't know. You guys can let me know where you stand down in the comment section below, but I like the LJ. I, I almost didn't include these in the countdown just because like, how do you compare? But I tried my best to fit them in there. So this is me attempting that. Number 16 is the Unmatched Series 4 Jade Cargill. Really like this figure a lot. I like how they paid attention to her build. I think that this captures her build really well. I like the head sculpt. I like the gear. Very cool figure. Uh, I wish it posed around better. I'm looking forward to her, to her Shop AEW exclusive, but I like Jade a lot. I just, I, I think the figure could be much better. So she doesn't, uh, she doesn't come in the cream of the crop of the countdown. Number 15 is going to be the Unmatched Series 5 Sean Spears. We got the chairman here. Very fun figure. I like it a lot. The white sleeves got some nice touch to it. Got the sleeve tattoo, white gold and purple gear. Very cool figure. I like it a lot. Not going to move up too much higher than that, but this is a very quality figure. I like the Sean Spears a lot. Also, this is kind of a, a question of the day. I don't know how often I'll do this, but question of the day for you today. How often do you just pick up a figure and start posing it around? Am I the only one out there that just picks up figures randomly and just starts posing them around and like not necessarily playing with them, but you're picking it up and you're posing around and just seeing how he feels in hand? Am I the only one that does that or do you do that? Let me know down below. Coming in at number 14 is the Series 2 Ortiz figure. Very fun figure. A lot of details here. You got the camo pants. You have the, the wrap or the towel here, which is okay. Orange shoes. Very creative. I actually like this figure a whole lot. Fun head sculpts, teal color. I mean, dude, it's a it's a cool piece. I like the Ortiz figure a lot right there. Coming in at number 13, we have the Unmatched Series 6 Ruby Soho. Very fun figure. Poses around great. Great aesthetic. Her pegs are kind of hidden by her tattoo, and she poses around really clean. Like, she feels really good in hand. And I put the j the vest on there from her NXT Elite. And I just like this figure. I, f I find myself picking this guy up and just posing around or this girl up and posing around a lot. Fun figure there. I enjoy the Ruby Soho. Number 12 is going to be the Evil Uno Unmatched Series 3. Solid figure. Very stiff. I like the details. I like the mask. But he is very stiff and he doesn't have the best ab crunch of all time. He does pop off right there as you guys can see. But uh, yeah, I still enjoy the figure quite a bit. I like Evil Uno. I like this figure. I like the socks over the boots. Fun figure. Not the great of all time. Number 11 is going to be Brian Danielson from Unmatched Series 5. If this figure had the correct torso or a smaller torso or he wasn't so damn big, he'd be higher. Like, he feels good in hand. He poses around well. I like the kick pads. I like everything going on. The likeness is freaking amazing. Uh, he's just too damn big, man, and being too damn big doesn't work for me. So he's coming in at the number 11 spot. Number 10. We're getting into top 10 territory. Coming in at number 10 is going to be the Unmatched Collection series number two Sting figure. Like this figure a lot. Always been a big Sting guy. Love Sting to death. Very cool aesthetic to this figure, but he uh, he can't go much higher. I just wish we'd get like a singlet Sting or something else. I, I'm sure they can't do some of these things, but I, I really want to see something else with Sting to where they get away from this body mold. We've seen this body mold so many damn times. I want to see, like it looks amazing and it captures him perfectly in this era, but also the ankles are kind of loose. Like he always wants to fall forward like John Cena, but I God, I love Sting enough to put him at my number 10 spot. Number 9 is going to be Malachi Black from Series 6 of the Unmatched Collection. You know, just like Brian Danielson, he's too big in the torso. He's a great looking figure, but I can't put him any higher just because of the size of this guy. Man, he's so damn massive. And I always bished about Mattel making him tiny, but his like, why is his damn torso this big, man? And I love, like, the kick pads. I like the posability. I like the likeness. The tattoos are fantastic, but he is a little stiff and his torso is too big, man. Can't can't do it. Number eight is going to be the Unmatched Collection Series 4 Hangman. I love this figure. It's really grown on me more and more. I almost had it in my top five. It was very close, but Hangman comes in at number eight. I love this figure. You guys know I love, you know, promo gears and backstage stuff and different things. Uh, just really fun attire. I think it looks amazing. I think they did a fantastic job on it. I put Hangman there at number eight. And number seven, we have the Series 3 Brody Lee figure. Love this figure. I mean, what can you say? Great looking aesthetic. It looks just like the character. Great heads 
sculpt. RIP to the legend. Not much to say about this figure. It, it is good. It's one of the best unmatched figures, no doubt about it. If people had it in their top five, wouldn't doubt you one moment. Coming in at number six for me is going to be the Unmatched Collection Series 4 Punk. Okay, I think that the head sculpt could be better here. I really enjoy this figure, but I did switch his legs out with Stu Grayson to kind of make a Trunks Punk. This was before I had the Chase or before I had the Walmart exclusive. So he did have the long tights. I felt like the long tights were way too skinny and that kind of docked him in points here. But I do enjoy the Punk figure. It's a great figure. I just, uh, not the top for me. It's not at the top for me. Coming into the top five. We're breaking into our top five, man. This is the cream of the crop. These are the best unmatched figures they've made so far, in my personal opinion. Coming in at number five, we have the Series 6 Brody Lee. Yes, the Brody Lee in the suit is better than the Brody Lee in the wrestling gear. I love this figure. Uh, it's much more smooth than his Series 3 figure, and it's so unique. I love the red suit. Great head sculpt, but he feels better in hand and moves around better to me personally. And it's a fun, it's a more fun figure. I, I just like it better than the Series 3. Coming in at number 4, we have the Series 5 Kenny Omega, man. I love this figure. Again, very unique. You're not going to see this every day. Uh, a lot of posability here. Lower shin cut, upper thigh cut, great details, great head sculpt. Very fun figure. Just one of those figures you love to look at. It stands out on a shelf. Very unique. Suited jacket is fire. Very cool details. That figure is amazing. I love that Kenny Omega figure. Coming into our top number 3, we have the Series 4 Jacket Cody. Everybody always gives me shish for this Cody being so high, but have you owned the figure? Have you actually had this figure and posed it around, man? It's so damn good. I mean, he's got these loafers on. He's got the navy jacket. Now, what would make this figure even better is if he didn't have, like, this winter-style coat on. If he had a regular suited jacket on, I love how fit it looks. This is how a suited figure should look. It should not be all that damn bulkiness that Mattel gives us. It should be slim like Brody. It should be slim like this. It looks slim. It looks like a guy in a suit. It doesn't look like he shoved a pillow underneath his damn shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, this looks like a man in a suit, and he looks damn handsome. He's killing it. Cody Rhodes, Unmatched Series 4, is one of my favorite AEW figures I've ever done. Absolute beast mode figure right there. Love the head sculpts. Love the chase figure as well. Coming in at number two in the Unmatched Collection, we have Series number one, Darby Allen. If you know me, you know how well and how much I love Darby Allen. Allen figures. They just feel so good. They do such a good job of capturing Darby Allen. You get the face paint, you get the posability, you get the feel in hand. He can pose around with the best of them. Tattoos. I mean, dude, this guy is a beast. Also, I noticed in the Fatal 4-Way at Double or Nothing, he had a new throat tattoo that said ain't something, but I couldn't tell what it said. If anybody knows down below, I looked for images, couldn't find it, but this Darby Allen figure is fantastic. Darby Allen figures never get old. They're similar to, they kind of remind me of like Rey Mysterio's, like really compact, really poseable, really toyetic. Like Darby Allen is the Rey Mysterio of AEW action figure. And coming in at the number one spot, the best AEW unmatched collection figure that they've made to date is gonna be Kenny Omega from AEW and Match Series 1. What else could it be, man? This is the standalone... Like, I don't know how I'd rank Kenny Omega figures right now because there's so damn many that are great. There's so many good ones. But this one might take the cake. I love that he's got that pissed-off, stern expression. The formula they use for him is great. The gear always looks fantastic that they do for him. I don't know how they do it. It's like screen printing the gear on there instead of using Deca. It's literally like they take a front and back image and screen print it onto the figure. It looks amazing. Amazing. These figures are great. They pose around great. I feel like they don't get near loose like other characters from AEW. I like that they have like the deltoid shoulder veins in it. It's just a fun figure, man. He's great. He is absolutely great. He reigns supreme among the rest. But there's Kenny, there's Darby, and there is Cody as my top three AEW and match figures. And this is my count countdown. I, I love this. I, I love this collection. Very fun. Somebody told me I should rank every WWE Elite action figure like singularly. Good God in heaven, can you imagine? Every mainline WWE Elite figure ranked. It's like 600 plus figures. It's like 600 and like 12 or something like that. Can you imagine? Nonetheless, man, that is going to wrap up my ranking of every AEW unmatched action figure from worst to best, man. Had a ton of fun with this. Always enjoy ranking videos, as you guys know. Hope you guys did enjoy, though. Leave me your thoughts on all these down in the comment section below. Before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our patrons of the MDT YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in becoming a patron member, definitely check out the links in the description below. But I think that is going to wrap up today's video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on my countdown, what you think the best is, what you think the worst is, where you agree or disagree. 
I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'm getting out of here. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never back down. We will not relent.